Greetings, friends. Welcome to CTUCC Conference Cast for February 2nd, 2012, the regular podcast of the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ. Whoever you are and wherever you may be on life's journey at this very moment, you are welcome here. Happy Groundhog's Day to you all. According to press reports this morning, Punxsutawney Phil saw his shadow and was frightened into his hole for six more weeks of winter. But Connecticut chuckles, this state's official prognosticator did not. After last winter, I personally will take all the spring I can get. We begin this week's conference cast with this meditation by your podcast host, Eric Anderson, the Minister of Communications and Technology. In his first letter to the church in Corinth, the Apostle Paul makes a disclaimer that he has no grounds to boast about proclaiming the gospel because he has to do it. But then he makes a very bold claim indeed. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessings. I confess that I read the Apostle Paul just a little skeptically sometimes. I can't help reading his assertion that he has become all things to all people with a bit of doubt. Well, more than a bit particularly because I know that he wrote a painful letter to this same group of people in Corinth, one which nobody saw fit to preserve, before he wrote what we call his second letter to the Corinthians. And even in that one, it's clear that the folks he addressed certainly did not all see him in the same way. I feel something of a kinship with Paul particularly in his self-evident struggle with his own arrogance, visible even in this passage in which he boasts about not being able to boast about himself. Now, if some of you detect a certain arrogance in my own self-identification with one of the greatest figures in the history of the church, well, you've got me. In today's political milieu, we'd call this attempt to take on and put off the law that Paul makes flip-flopping. In an older day, we'd have called it pandering. I rather suspect that it looks suspicious to those watching when it's not looking downright condescending or insulting. Nevertheless, he's right to make the attempt. The gospel Paul treasures so highly, the good news that in Jesus' death and resurrection, God has extended a new and radical grace, is his only to give away. The impediments of culture, custom, and clan should not prevent the passing of God's love from the person who is blessed to know it to the person who does not know it yet. Paul is even willing to take on his own arrogance to reduce the distraction from the one clear vital issue. Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God, and the love of God. Paul can't become all things to all people, and neither can we. We bring ourselves to any new conversation along with the precious treasure of the gospel which we offer. We can't help that. Our task is to identify and lay aside the irrelevancies which distract, the cultural overlays, the personal biases, the very language to which we're accustomed in order to better display the gift of the gospel itself. If we can't lay them aside, as our beloved Apostle Paul couldn't, then we get to confess them and acknowledge them. This arrogance, that's me. It's not the gospel. The gospel's better than that. And better yet, the grace of God is not mine. It belongs to you. Or, to take up the theme my colleague Charlie Kuchenbrod gave us some weeks ago, Let love win.
Here's a prayer for this week. Holy One, we thank you for the precious gift of your love. And we rejoice to know that you have given it to us and to all the people of the world. We ask your further guidance to help us share your grace with those around us, to distinguish between what is the gospel and what is us, and to proclaim good news unburdened. O God, let love win. Amen. In the news this week, yesterday at noon, several East Haven clergy and church members assembled on the steps of the Old Stone Church UCC and pledged their efforts to help a wounded and divided community heal. All the citizens of East Haven need to build a culture that honors human rights and welcomes the diversity of races and cultures, they said. In a phone conversation yesterday, Old Stone's pastor, the Reverend Karen Gronbeck Johnson, asked for prayers on behalf of the town of East Haven and its residents. Four East Haven police officers were recently indicted on federal charges of civil rights violations directed against Hispanic members of the community. Police Chief Leonard Gallo has announced his retirement, and East Haven Mayor Joseph Maturo has twice been criticized for culturally insensitive public comments. Last week, as the January sun beamed down on the Congregational Church of Plainville, UCC, it cast new shadows. New walls are rising for a rebuilt social hall just under one year after its roof collapsed beneath heavy snow. It's very exciting to see things, said Pastor the Reverend Dr. Claire Bamberg, after many months of evaluation and planning. The poet Robert Frost may have distrusted such things. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, he wrote. But church walls support roofs. And beneath this roof, says Dr. Bamberg, they mean to create warm, welcoming, and worshipful spaces that will minister to the community. Among them are a new youth space, improved educational rooms, and a special section for the use of recovery group meetings. Well, they'd call it a chance meeting. Judy Snitkin, secretary of the Niantic Community Church UCC, struck up a conversation in a knitting supply shop one day. From that chat has emerged a new and active outreach at her church. By the end of January, she and her cohorts in the Prayer Shawl Knitting Ministry Group have created over 100 scarves that will be given to athletes in Connecticut's Winter Special Olympics. Learn more about joining in the effort, the deadline is February 27th for this year, at scarvesforspecialolympics.org. There's a lot happening at Silver Lake this season. Summer registration is open, and so are three great spring events – The Maple Sugaring Retreat for Junior Highs in March, the Women's Spiritual Retreat, and Spring Action Weekend, both in April. We're also looking for nurses to be part of the summer program. They'll spend a week tending to the needs of a group of conferees. We have other stories on our website this week as well. See all the current headlines at ctucc.org slash news. Registration is now open for March in the Sun, a day of workshops and learning experiences for pastors, church officers, educators, committee members, communicators, and more. There's a workshop for moderators, one on using your church building as an asset to your community, another on youth ministry, and for committee chairs, a workshop titled, Holding Meetings People Want to Attend. Visit ctucc.org and click the button on the right, for much in the sun to learn more. The program will be held on March 24th at First Congregational Church UCC in Cheshire. Get on the bus for the National Youth Event. This great gathering of youth ages 13 through 18 will be held July 10th through 14th at Purdue University. The Connecticut Conference, along with other New England conferences, are coordinating bus transportation to get young people to these five days of dynamic workshops, inspiring worship, hands-on service projects, and rockin' recreation and music. 
You'll find a button on the right for the National Youth Event on our website at ctucc.org. Advocates for Universal Health Care will gather at the State Capitol on February 8th. Another Stepping Stones workshop after Sardines Then What will be held on February 15th in Southington. There's a special benefit performance for the Summers Congregational Church Rebuilding Fund to be held in Summersville on the 17th. And an interfaith sacred conversation on race will be held on February 19th in Hartford. Podcasting 101 with Eric Anderson and Carol Vassar Pettit has been rescheduled to February 23rd at the Conference of Churches in Hartford. Marie Fortune is the keynote speaker at Healing the Generations, a multi-faith symposia on trauma and violence to be held February 29th in Hamden. Learn about these and more by visiting us at ctucc.org slash events. And that brings this conference cast to a close. Thanks to you for listening and to GarageBand for our music. Primary funding for conference cast comes from your congregation's gifts to our church's wider mission, basic support, changing lives through the United Church of Christ. This is Eric Anderson, the Minister of Communications and Technology for the Connecticut Conference of the United Church of Christ, praying that your days this week may be filled with the presence, the guidance, and the grace of God.